and welcome to Acrylic Code. Today we have a new touch designer tutorial on this animation on meta bolts. I will show you how you can create this step by step and you can add your own touch and be creative. Before we move on, please consider subscribing to the channel and turn on the notification bell to support us into making more tutorials. We also recently launched our Patreon with different tiers to offer all touch designer files, online tools to create generative art, as well as personalized classes. I will leave the link to the Patreon in the comments for anyone who is interested. Now back to today's tutorial. To begin, we're going to create a rendering network with a grid. So let's press tab and create a grid sop. Right click at the out of the grid and attach a geometry. Then press tab and let's attach the camera and the lights. Press tab again and let's attach a render top. Click on the render, press Alt and N and move the mouse to create a null. Turn on the display flag on the null top. Right click between the null and the render and attach a null. In the parameter window we set the alpha of the background to 1 and we say comp upper background. Next go to the parameter window of the render, go to the common tab and set the resolution to 1280 by 1280. To get the camera closer to our grid, let's go to the parameter window of the camera and decrease the value of the translate Z parameter. I set it around 1.3 units away from the grid. This information is going to be important soon when we do the line material, so let's keep that in mind. Now let's press tab and we're going to create a line material, a funk material, as well as a switch. Connect both the line and the funk material to the input of the switch. Then press Alt N and move the mouse to create a null. Drag the null, drop it onto the geo and select parameter material. Great, now we have the grid. For the next step, we're going to create some meta balls. So let's press tab, create a meta ball sub and copy paste it twice so we have three in total. Press tab, create a merge sub, connect all three meta balls to its input and at the end of the network, attach a null. Now just to illustrate, if I go to the parameter window of the second metaball sub and increase the Y parameter of the center, we get this melting effect on the result. And the same effect we will get if we increase the X center value on the third metaball. Now let's make some space before the null and we're going to attach a convert sop. This one will be useful to us when we do the fong later, but for now I'm going to bypass it. Here we're going to introduce a new operator, the ray operator, which will project the grid onto the metaballs and it will give us the effect of the metaballs coming through the grid. So let's right click on the connecting line between the grid and the geo, go to insert operator and attach the ray operator. Now if we attach the metaballs as input of the ray operator, we can see the result on the render. To decrease the size of the metaballs, I will make some space before the convert sop, right click on the connecting line, go to insert operator and attach a transform sop. In the parameter window we decrease the uniform scale to around 0.29. With the translate values we can try to center the metaballs, but since they will be animated, this doesn't matter for now. Now to have enough space, we will turn the grid into a high resolution grid. To do this, we increase the rows and columns to 50 respectively. We see this is looking much better, but since everything is white, it's a little hard to distinguish. So to improve this, we're going to play with the line material. It's important to understand here that the distance from the grid to the camera is different to the distance from the metaballs to the camera. And we're going to use this difference to have the grid in one color and the metaballs in another color. More on this later. In the parameter window of the line material, let's set the distance far parameter to zero. The distance near parameter, on the other hand, will have almost the same value of the translate Z parameter of the camera. Let's first set the distance near parameter to 1.3 to illustrate. From now, if we set the value to be slightly lower than 1.3, then we get this separation of the grid and the metaballs. So let's set this value to 1.2. 294. Imagining what is happening right now is that our camera is shooting rays at our object, which is the grid and the metaballs. How the material works is that if we set the distance near value to 1.3, which is the exact distance from the grid to the camera, then the camera rays are going to touch everything until and including the grid. Whereas if we set the distance near to a value in which the grid and the metaballs separate, like we did here, then the rays are touching everything but the grid. 
Like so, we define the grid as being far and the metabolus as being near. And once we do this, we can control the grid with the width far parameter and the metabolus with the width near value. Hopefully that makes sense. And now we can actually change the colors. So let's go to the line tab and I will change the line far color to a blue so that I can change the color of the grid. I feel here maybe the lines of the metabolus are a little intense, so I will go a little lower on the width near parameter. Great, now we kind of have our base and we want the metabolus to move. There are different ways to do this, but for this tutorial we're going to use a noise chop. In the parameter window go to the channel and we'll rename the channel names to TX and TY for movements in the X and Y directions. Go to the common tab and turn on the time slice parameters so we only have one sample of the noise. Before I copy paste the noise for all the metabolus, let's check the movement for only one of them. Create a null after the noise in case we want to make changes in the movement. Press A to make the null viewer active and then drag the TX channel and drop it onto the X channel of the center parameter of the first metabol. Select Chop Reference. And we repeat and drag the Y channel onto the Y channel of the metabol. Now from here you can go to the noise and increase the amplitude to have more movement or increase the period to have the movement be slower. For now this is okay. Now I will copy paste the noise and the null twice for the next two metabols. In here you could experiment with other chops in between for other effects. Let's say, for example, if you wanted a movement with a pattern. And then we repeat the same process we did before by referencing the channels of the noise to the center of the respective metabol. Great, we're done with the first part of the animation. Now, if you don't like the grid look, we're going to have another version of this. And for this reason, we created the switch operator. If we go here to one, we go from the line material to the fong material. Let's disconnect the ray sop and connect the node directly to the geo. And there we have the metabolus with another look. Now let's add a switch sop to connect the ray and the node and have the ray first and the node second as our inputs. Then we set here the input parameter to one. Let's go to the parameter window of the switch material, right click on the index and then go to copy parameter. Then go to the switch sop, we click on the select input and say paste reference. And there we go, now we can easily switch between our two modes. Great, now back to the convert sop we added before. We notice that our metabols have some edge and we'll use the convert to smooth out the edges by increasing the U and the V parameters in the parameter window. This will cause our FPS to go down, but that is all right. We can select all operators and turn the viewer off so that we can help the FPS go up. Now, if we switch back here to the grid look, we notice that the animation has glitches and this is caused by the convert we just added. So what we can do now to avoid this is cut the convert from here and paste it back after the null, so it only affects this switch. So this network down here is responsible for the phone material and this network up here is responsible for the line. So now if we switch again, everything should be fine. From here we can play around to make the fong animation prettier. We can copy paste the lights and move both lights around or give them different colors. And from here you can play around with the lights and the camera or the values of the noise. Be creative and try out different effects. We notice here that we have a warning that a texture is missing. So to fix this, let's attach a texture sop before the geo and everything will be fine. And 
this was the tutorial for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new and got some inspiration. Please tag us if you recreate this and if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comments. And I will see you next Friday on a new tutorial. Until then, have a great time. Bye!